Commission meeting. Uh, my name is Ben Coronado. We're still hosting these uh, via Zoom. Um, we can start uh, with a call. Oh, so if I was thinking with the public comment, if Terry, how have we been doing that? It, was it that they just pretty much raised their hand and we addressed them if there is any or it, um, public comment or raising hands? Um, are you talking about if public other public comes in other than commissioners? Um, yeah, normally it would be at the end of the meeting during the public comment period. Um, because it's not a public hearing on anything. Okay. okay. Um, I can let you know if somebody comes in. There's nobody on right now. I, okay, perfect. Um, thanks, Terry. So we'll start with the, um, the roll call. Um, I'll just go ahead and start with that. Ben Coronado, Parks Commission Chair, here. Uh, Mary Barber, Vice Chair. Here. Louis Steeman. Here. Ben Lorenz. Here. Roger Henderson. Here. Sarah McDaniel? Here. Nicole Hicks? Here. And I think all the parks commissioners. And then from Public Works, uh, Jeff Langhelm, Public Works Director? Yes, here. And Public Works Assistant, Terry Garrison? Here. And on behalf of the City Council, Spencer Abersold? Here. Hey, Spencer. All right. Um, approval of the last meeting minutes, the February 3rd, 2021 minutes. Thank you for typing that up, Terry. <laughs> that must not have been easy. <laughs> I looked through that, I was like, holy Moses. That was a tough one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I move to approve the February 3rd, 2021 minutes. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, any opposed? All right, minutes so approved. Sarah wants to move or second everything today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and no old business from the last meeting. Uh, it did look like council adopted it though. Um, so I believe that's a full go, correct? Talking about the uh, Austin estuary. The resolution. Yep. Yeah. Call cut estuary. Was that, a, was that a unanimous vote on their behalf? No, I think it was six to one. Yeah, okay. there was one no. Hmm. That's exciting though, that's it. Um, okay, on the new business, the Conservation Futures Property and Grant application. Now, I'm thinking this is the property that's north of the wastewater treatment facility and kind of runs to the uphill side um, of the Cushman Trail. But Jeff or Terry, I am sure have way more information on this than I do. I know this is a relatively new topic. Um, so I'll go ahead and hand it off to them on that one. Sure. Yeah, I'll uh, actually we're going to provide a map here. So hopefully all of you can see my screen now. Yep. Okay. So the property highlighted in orange is the property we're talking about. And, and just to be clear, uh, this actually has already gone to city council and city council has made a motion to move forward with this. So we were moving faster than we thought uh, with city council. So this is more less business and more of a report. So apologize for that. But uh, yeah, so the highlighted parcel in orange is 11.5 uh, acres. It's currently owned by uh, a family interest called the Lyons family, L-Y-O-N-S family. Um, they do not live in the immediate vicinity. They live elsewhere, I think on the East Coast actually. Um, there's a history behind this property, but the long and short it is, the family has decided that uh, they don't have a whole lot of interest in developing it. They've Someone had uh, come to the city a while ago and made a a request to have a what they call a pre-application meeting, which is uh, basically where a property owner throws out an idea to the city and says, hey, here's what I want to do with this property. Will this work? Or can you tell me what the impacts and permits are going to look like? And then the city responds. And so again, pre-application before they apply. And so uh, I think uh, Community Development Director Katrina Tenutson has said that there was possibly up to 34 houses, maybe it's 36 houses that could have been put on this property uh, based on zoning and critical areas. Um, this map that you have before you is a topographic map. Um, if you're familiar with looking at topographic maps, you can see the contour lines, how close they are together. Uh, these 
dark green lines are 10 foot intervals, I believe. Yeah. And it's hard to see, but there's white lines in between that are two foot intervals too. Um, but you can see if these are 10 foot intervals, it gets pretty steep in some of these areas here and here in particular. Um, but again, here's the treatment plant for your reference, Donkey Creek Park. The city actually owns the, about five acres here also uh, that crosses Cushman Trail. So the city owns quite a bit of this area. Uh, and the Lyons family said that uh, they were interested after being approached by uh, a, a few different people. Uh, there was interest in the city in, in having this property put into conservation uh, instead of develop, allow it to be developed. Um, just so you're familiar that where, where this is going is, is that because there is uh, some significant critical areas in this part on this property, as you can tell, it's the first property immediately upstream of Donkey Creek Park. Um, uh, there's definitely critical areas that, that should be protected. And um, there's always an interest in having public access uh, in, in these types of properties, this type of area where we have, uh, especially Cushman Trail nearby and our park nearby. Um, the city and the Puyallup tribe worked together along with Forterra to get a group of people together to approach the family. They had conversations with the family uh, representatives and um, included even conversations on the periphery with Wild Fish Conservancy. And uh, that, that coalition of groups uh, had good conversations with the family. The family said they would be interested in selling it to the city or, or, or to a, a group for conservation purposes. Um, initial looks at this property, uh, we determined that actually the Puyallup tribe who was very interested in owning it found out that they, they couldn't apply for Pierce County Conservation Futures Program application, which is where we're looking at receiving a majority of the funding for this project or for this acquisition. Um, and so then we started talking with Forterra about how an application could be put together, who would be the applicant, who would be the receiver. The receiver means the future property owner. And uh, after talking internally about this property, decision was made that the city should probably be the applicant and the city should definitely be the receiver. Um, so right now, uh, it is, it was adopted by city council at their February 22nd meeting through resolution uh, 1200 to participate in match funding for this property and to authorize the mayor to go after uh, conservation futures funding through Pierce County to try and acquire the property. Right now, the rough estimate is about $500,000 for the property. We'll see how that comes through. There still needs to be appraisal and many other processes that take place. And it is key on having Pierce County Conservation Futures uh, application successful. Um, let's see some details about that. Uh, the, the Conservation Futures program does require public access and it does require matching funds. Uh, Jennifer Keating, who you, you all know very well now with the Puyallup tribe, uh, worked diligently at the same time she was doing the estuary work and a number of other work. And if you've heard about the elementary school um, uh, up in Harbor Hill, that's now being named uh, Mr. Wabsh. Uh, she was also working with her council to provide $50,000 in matching grant money for this property, even though it's not going to be pure Puyallup tribe property. Uh, they just recognize the critical area protection and it, it uh, continues to move forward um, their interest in critical habitat protection for salmon. So, why, so hey Jeff, why wasn't the tribe eligible for the conservation grant? Uh, it had to be, I forget the, the term, it, it had to be a nonprofit or a municipality. It could not be a tribe. That's just, I don't know if that's state law or the county, uh, county code that says that, but yeah, they weren't eligible because of the way the grant structure is put together. That's weird. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, but right now we have, uh, we've received input from Forterra. The Forterra had offered their services. The city decided we're not going to proceed with Forterra, but they're still helping a little bit with us. But really council member Denson is the one who is leading the charge on this. She's putting together all the application materials uh, with some public work support for like this GIS map that was made by Mike Simmons. 
Uh, Katrina Knudsen has provided her input. She not only is involved through the city, through community development, but also has a previous position with the Great Peninsula Conservancy. Um, anyway, so we're, it's a great team effort to have this property move forward into the application process. So these applications are due March, 4, March 15th, Friday, March 15th. And um, we should be hearing back from the technical advisory group that reviews the applications on whether or not they support this and how it ranks. And we should hear back from them, I believe it's August of this year. And then, it, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's actually June and then it goes to city or county council in August, I think actually that is for timeline. So we'll know a lot more by the end of summer if we're successful with this application, if county council supports it. And then we would receive funding no sooner than January of 2022. So uh, again, Councilmember Denson is working with the property owners, keeping them abreast of it. We have to do an appraisal and a few other things. Um, and uh, one key item is to provide that public access that is required by the Conservation Futures Program is, as you see in this map, and I'm gonna scroll a little bit, so I apologize. So there was this trail that was a long time ago named Twalacax Trail, which we know is no longer spelled correctly. Uh, this, this trail is in an existing easement across uh, Rosedale Cottage's property and also across the city's property, which is down here, all the way down the treatment plant. Um, this trail could very well be removed from this area and moved over in skirt Donkey Creek here and then come up the ravine, cross, and then come up there's some old roads and some other grades that we could possibly get to put the trail all the way up in this area. So, so that's the uh, public access that we're looking at. Um, it also will grant us a little more uh, ability to be able to manage the property accordingly because we can do our fish passage barrier removal here for this culvert, day like this culvert, put a bridge or some other box culvert in here. So there's many benefits that we see going forward. Um, if successful with this application and with the purchase now, uh, purchase agreement, um, the city would end up putting this property into the parks and open space inventory. So it would be introduced into the parks recreation open space plan as open space area. Um, and so we'll know again, if we're successful by the, before the end of this year. And so as we finalize the parks recreation open space plan, we will have this uh, possibly in our inventory, which we desperately need if you look at our existing parks recreation open space plan. So, so that's that. Uh, it was, the, again, the resolution 1200 was adopted by council and we're getting ready to move forward with the application by the March. Any questions? Yes, yes can um, the fish get through now under, in that culvert? They can. It's, it's not considered a fish blockage. It's con considered a fish barrier, I think is the term. So it, it is, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's harder than it should be uh, if it was natural slope, but um, it is something that they can get past with some effort. <clears throat> Sarah? Um, is there any um, plan in case you don't get the conservation futures grant to um, pursue or you're just assuming that will happen? <laughs> well, yeah, it's a very strong candidate um, and we're leaning heavily on that grant program. Um, I, if we don't uh, success, aren't successful with the grant program, then uh, I think council has a lot of other options, including just outright purchasing it. Um, but uh, I think there's partners that might come to the table to have a collective, uh, make a collective uh, purchase and sale agreement for the property. So we'll see, but no guarantees. Um, I know that for Conservation Futures, they, I think you go and do a presentation. Yes. Um, is it possible for some of us or me to, to be, attend that or participate would... in their help? Uh, yes, I think it is possible. I would reach out to Councilmember Denson. She is leading the charge on this. She has put together 99% of the application and she is collecting letters of support. Okay. So um, yeah, I think that'd be, and, and yeah, reach out to her. She can help coordinate that. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or Roger. 
Jeff, what's immediately north of that parcel? Is, it, uh, uh, is that going to be developed? Because I've seen for sale style signs and I, along uh, Harborview uh, Drive, and I'm not sure whether that's part of it. Is there going to be a large well, tract above that? Yeah, there very well could be. It, it's in the same zoning as the parcel, the Lyons family parcel here. Um, and it would be also uh, developed with those critical areas, as you can see, that are on the parcel of the north. It would also have uh, some significant reductions due to critical areas, but it is developable. It's not prohibited. But the critical areas include the um, Donkey Creek, right? I mean, that, it that includes the Donkey Creek. Over, put into a culvert. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I spoke over you, Roger. It includes I, what? Uh, it. I mean, they, any, anybody developing that wouldn't be able to culvert that whole section or pave it over or divert it or assuming it's, if it's a critical area, there's only minimal things they can do, if anything. Well, they're allowed to cross the creek. And cross so they, the could put a, they could put a bridge across it. Um, it would have to, of course, meet some very stringent requirements, but uh, there's gonna be buffers, but they would be allowed to cross the creek. Okay. Uh, let's see, Ben Coronado. Which where ben? is the current, where the Cushman currently crosses Burnham or intersects with Burnham? I don't know if it's on this map. Let me see if it, oops. It's going to be up north. Yeah, let me see west. if it goes up. No, it doesn't. It's just north of here. So 96th Street is right okay. here. And so it's right at 96th. Okay. And then, so the, back to the red area, um, at the very, I guess, uh, westerly portion of that. Mm -hmm. Where kind of idea wise is that on the Cushman? Is that the very top of the hill? Like that, so yeah, just on that western border mm -hmm. of that entire red box. Is that the very see. top of the hill on that side? There is a hill here. Let me see, there's, come on, come on. Come on, cursor, change back. Um, 350. It no, it's not at the very top of the hill. It's it, there is a hill there, but then it drops down and come and it starts to climb again here. Okay. Okay, yeah. I see. That's the second big hill is up further north then. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think, think that's right here. One more question. I think you answered it already. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, ben Lorenz. Uh, how large is the site again? 11.5 acres. And it includes the triangle? It does. It, this is a, an anomaly. Our parcel down here, the city's parcel is the same thing. This triangle is also the same parcel number as this one. It was bisected by the Cushman Trail right of way. Okay. And so when they bisected it, they just tied the two parcels together, the land parcels, together, the same parcel number though. Okay. okay. Any other questions on that? Yeah, one more real quick. Oh, sorry. I'll raise my hand. <laughs> yes, Ben, corn on. Um, so how, mu how much of this area that will, could the city own, I guess? So Donkey Creek, the wastewater treatment facility, there's another property, and then... Yeah, I don't have the parcel map up, but I and I don't know the acreage, but if I was to draw a line, uh, my cursor's going in and out. We own this parcel down here, down to about here, and my car cursor disappears. We own here, and then we own all the way down to here, essentially. So um, I don't. I wouldn't say we own a total of another ten acres, but it's pretty close. I well for downtown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all I have on that. Does anybody else have any um, questions for Jeff? For um, it sounded like Sarah was interested in following up with that meeting. Do you know the date or anything like that um, off the top of your head? I don't know when the presentation is going to take place, um, but it's going to, I think it's going to take place in uh, April or May. Uh, just the applications are due on the 15th. That's all I know for sure right now. Okay, that's all I have for that item. Uh, we'll move on to item number two, the um, inventory of parks facility discussion. And this is for the update for the 2022 pros plan. So I think this is something that we had discussed about um, incorporating into the pros plan and updating the inventory. I believe Luis had been working on a inventory list. I 
Luis, can you give us an update? Uh, Terry, can I, I can share my screen? You should be able to share your screen. Uh, let's see if I can find the right one here. So on the, let's do this one first. On the, so I'm doing, going a little bit backwards here, but the, the survey form, which is a survey doc, feeds into a spreadsheet. And this is what the spreadsheet prints like, um, if that makes sense, right? So uh, I'm gonna get to the survey in a minute, but what I was trying to be able to capture was something that was sortable by date or who or the park visited um, or the purpose of, of the visit. Like I happen to be at Ansich from a recreational point of view as opposed to doing a real inspection. And then being able to talk about park condition in a couple different ways and the landscaping, parking, ADA, general observations, right? That might tell us over time how a park had changed in its use or was it, you know, how busy was it? How is its accesses, any safety issues? Um, I did it in terms of compliments and suggestions, which I had seen in some other park surveys. And I just sort of liked that language, but of course we can change any of that. But, uh, other comments, um, this was in August. So we were still, you know, at the height of kind of pandemic stuff. So noted that. And then I, I added a piece for adopt a park ideas, uh, which I think was useful for, for that side of the project. So with that in mind, let's see if I can get to the, I'm going to stop this share. I'm sure again. Uh, oh, hold on one second. Sorry, I didn't realize I had to. That was to. really good, Luis. Nice job. Hold on, hold on. It gets maybe better. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, I didn't realize I couldn't share it that way. Okay, this is the survey doc. And it starts out by, I can title the section, but um, who was doing it. And, and at the time that I did this, I need apparently to update names. Um, poor Roger, you're not in there, but you will be. And uh, when you go to fill this out, um, you have drop downs so that you can click on drop down and click on the park that you visited. So I've loaded the all of the park spaces. Something we could talk about is if we're, is it necessary to add open spaces? If so, how do I describe them? Um, that's a conversation for another time, maybe. Uh, the date visited is a choice, time visited, um, purpose of the visit. So all of these, I tried to be consistent that if park conditions say bathrooms, are they clean? Do they need restocking? You know, what do they, what do they need? <clears throat> and that those are choices that you can make and that will fill into that Excel spreadsheet. Um, how are the trash cans? Are they are they empty or full? You know, and I will say at that day the Ansich Park trash cans were absolutely overloaded and um, were in need of attention. Uh, so anyway, but you can see how this survey goes. So it's fairly easy, and it's easy on the phone too to be able to just keep scrolling and clicking. It it is optimized for the phone. Mm. Um, it's wow, harder. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the, some parks have equipment. So is it in good repair? Does it have graffiti? Is it repairable? You know, what do we think? So I tried to make it as uh, not everything will apply to every park, but that it was pretty, pretty darn complete. Uh, and sections can be, I can add two more sections. You can have seven sections altogether, I think. So there's 
there's more we could do there. But anyone could log, this is a Google form. So in theory, any of us could log into the Google form and, and then it would upload into the spreadsheet format. And Terry, I'm so impressed. It looks so amazing. Good job. Yeah, I know you got a couple of hands up, though. Uh, I don't know if you want to take questions quite yet or if you're still going. Yeah. And Terry, I apologize. I didn't see your email until today, when, just now, when I went to look for the link. And that's my fault that I didn't check my email for the last couple of days. And I apologize. Uh, so, I don't, any, any questions or comments there? Sarah? Yeah. I have, um, I think this is really impressive. You are amazing how much time you have spent on this. Um, this week I had occasion to skim through and it was literally a skim of the old pros plan. And I would recommend, you might have it all covered, but um, there's a lot of details in that uh, inventory of the parks that you might want to address on your spreadsheet if you're gonna use this for the future pros plan. Okay. It'd just be worth looking at what all of the details that they recorded. Okay, good point. Mary. Okay. Um, and I was going to say something similar to that too, that I think that we should build on the existing pros plan inventory and make a conscious decision to either to add things or take them off. And I guess to that end, if we're, I think that things like empty trash cans. And there were a couple other things that don't necessarily apply to the pros plan. So I'm not sure that we wanna put them on here. If what we're doing is an inventory that we're going to use in the pros plan, because if we're in a park and we see an, an overflowing trash can, maybe we should just send Terry a message. Notice I said Terry and not Jeff. No. <laughs> Well, and at the time, um, back in August when I was doing this, it wasn't for the pros plan, right? Yeah. This, this was for, this had more to do with adopt a park than it did for anything else. So, so these are excellent. If we're, if we're going to adapt it for pros plan, I think that's great. No objection to that. And, uh, following the pros plan, editing it to follow more closely how the pros plan looks is great. I, I would suggest that we do it for the pros plan. Do you think you're going to have enough space on this form to capture all the data the pros plan would demand? You only have what seven, seven. Maybe pages? I can let me play with it and see. Um, okay. There's the way or the cheater way around that. Um, having done a few surveys before, is to have multiple choice and not one choice, right? That you can, you can have almost unlimited numbers of boxes in a section. So and we might want to you might look at moving it to Survey Monkey if with that too. Uh, the only reason I didn't do it on Survey Monkey was because the uh, had I had had a comment from um, Nicole before I started that there was some Pitch with the city using SurveyMonkey, and I thought, okay, I'll just do it on as a Google Doc for now because anyone, any one of us can get to it, right? Oh, okay. And I um, didn't know what the constraints or or freedoms were, so that's the only reason. Mm -hmm. Ben, you have your hand up. Two comments and a question. First of all, this is really terrific. Great work. Love it. Love the format. It looks like it's pretty easy to use. And the other comment is how in the heck do you go two days without checking your email? Give me some secrets to that because I can't go two minutes sometimes. It's because I have five email accounts and I get about a thousand email, well, literally about 500 emails a day. And my personal one is the last one I check. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there's the answer. <laughs> yeah, it's not that I'm not on email. Okay. I don't always get to the Gmail account. Good work. So no tips for you there. Sorry. Yeah. Blown away. This is impressive. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't. Uh, unfortunately, as the maker, I don't. I don't remember 
how I can, what button I can click to show you how it looks as a, as a survey. Well, I don't think I can from here. So that you can see how it looks with the drop down. It's cool. I just noticed we need to add Soundview Forest also. Well, that's what happens because I use the pros plan to build the yeah. report list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Already outdated. <laughs> right, so the pros plan and the, and the city's website actually too for for um, a couple things. Um, but those are all things that will get updated as time Yeah. Goes. And I do forget, like I I have to say, I, I do not think of the skate park for whatever reason or the old ferry landing is like city parks and of course they are. Um, so. Huh. Okay, so uh, I mean, is the idea to get all of these filled out before we start the pros plan update then, Jeff? Is that the idea behind that? Yes, I would say that to have an inventory like this completed before we even start the pros plan would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so do we... Oh, hey. I feel like you put so much work into this. I, I mean, <laughs> do, I do, are you still interested in going out and surveying parks? I mean, this is still kind of your thing, so I don't want to certainly step on your feet if you want to, you know, tackle 20 parks, but. <laughs> nope. Uh, um, I, uh, I'm i totally open to the group figuring out how to do this. I did just figure out how to preview it. So if you're, and trust me about how it looks on the phone, but as you click through it, you can drop down and say who you are and keep going. So it's it's pretty. Uh, it's, I don't know why it's not advancing, but it's a it is pretty. It's very straightforward. I'm selecting option one on the next screen. Oh, that's a problem. God forbid we don't keep going. Nope. <laughs> nope. Anyway, it does work. <laughs> I promise you, it works because I've tested it. Oh, anyway, there you go. Great job. Uh, great, great job, Louis. <laughs> That's impressive. And then on top of what you put together last month, I'm just like, oh my God. There you go. <laughs> nice job. Very impressive stuff. Um, so, so I can, I, do I share, uh, well, it's pre if I'm gonna update it for the pros plan, um, for Mary's suggestion, which I, I think is great, then I would probably want to do that this weekend and then share it to the group. Yeah. Ideally, yeah. Do you have time this weekend? I mean, uh, if, if it comes out next week, I think that would still be okay. I mean, because we're still waiting on the first quickly, finisher, I think, or maybe, maybe possible. not, um, for the April start of the pros plan. So, um, yeah. So I think if we can start tackling that in the month of March, that'd be amazing. Mary, you have a question? Well, what I was wondering was, I, I think it's gr I think we should update it before we start. And then I'm wondering if we should just all start going and see which ones are done and which aren't done, or should we, or do you want to send out an email and people can say, I'll do this one, I'll do this one, or how do you want to, how do you want to handle making sure that all of them get covered is what I'm asking. I, I think we look at the list and I think we sign up for the ones we want. You know, I live at Grandview Forest Park, so it makes sense that I literally hop my fence and do that survey, right? Um, you, you taking first dibs on a, whatever you want. So, <laughs> so, so, you so, so people, to, you know, um, it's easy enough to even just in an email for us to volunteer to do take on four or five and go do them. And okay. Terry, we can do that, right? With the uh, Open Meetings Act, we can do. Can we sign up for them? Just so we can have a conversation about it, right? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm not sure the easiest way. Um, I was I was gonna try to put this as a shareable document on the city's website. So um, maybe that's the first step after you get it finalized. Okay. Okay. And then somehow I can send out a list to see who wants to be assigned to a certain park. Great. Or, or you can send me an email saying, hey, I, you know, here's my, 
here's my list and we can kind of sort it out. Okay. No probably be overlapping interest. Right. Do we want to do like top five and then kind of go from there? Or do you want to just like, okay, Luis has first pick and then, okay, these are the leftovers and then send that out and just, and that seems kind of ridiculous, but. Yeah, I don't want it to get too complicated. Yeah, yeah. Or do you want to just try and do it right now? Everybody just pick some parks. And then when it's, I mean, we still need to add, add Soundview Forest, but we can just pick parks now if you guys want to start. Parts. <clears throat> That's fine. Yeah. Um, so there was what, 21 with Soundview Forest? Apparently. And maybe the Bogue viewing platform? Is that on there? Nope. Nope. And what's the one up by Borgen Boulevard too? That little tiny one with the musical instruments in it? Is that on there? John. John. That's John. It's here. So I'll I'll take Sarah. Sarah, you're gonna pass on this, or do you? I mean, I know it's your last meeting. Are you wanting to try and? Do one or two of these? I'm totally into doing a few of them. Um, okay. I would be totally into doing Donkey, Austin, and unless someone else wants to, and um, uh, blah, 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 blah. and Wilkinson. What do you want? Thank you. Yeah. Louise? Uh, Grandview, uh, Ansich, uh, Veterans, uh, uh, might, as well do, might as well do the skate park and Eden while I'm in both of the other locations. Okay. Um, oh, good. That's five. Yeah, it might be one heavy. We'll see when we get work through here who else has got availability. Uh, Nicole? Um, I'm not sure what's, um, what's left. That? Just to do a review of one of these parks, of these one, one of these 22 parks, yeah, including know, Soundview not, Forest I'm, and the boat viewing platform. I'm happy with any of them. Um, if I could, I prefer to maybe bypass um, Scansy Brothers and Jerisich, um, just with how crowded it is down there. Right. <laughs> The BMX park. Yeah, and, there's, and you can just assign me to whatever. I'll I know you're pretty mind. familiar with the Crescent Creek Park BMX area. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Or would you prefer something there different? There a lot. Yeah, BMX <laughs> Crescent Creek. And Crescent Creek um, go together. Uh, what else? And I could take Jerisich, Scancy, Soundview, and Old Ferry. Yeah. Soundview. Old Ferry. What did you say? Soundview, Jerisich, Scancy? Scancy, and Old Ferry Dock. Okay. Well, should I better uh, ben, hey, Ben, what do you, which ones are you thinking? Well, I would need a list now to see what's left, but. Okay. Um, so Cushman and Shaw are up for grabs. Finholm is up for grabs. Okay, I'll take that. Cushman, Shaw, and Finholm. Cushman, Shaw, and, and Hill Climb. And okay. I have veterans already. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, Roger, what does that what does that leave you and I? I think I got I think you and I have seeds and stems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um Hey, I'll give back Scancy and Jerisich, and I'll take Maritime. It's closer to the house. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what do we got here then? Scansy left? Um, Scansy and Jerisich, which are next to each other. Yeah. The Civic Lawn. Oh, that. And, okay, somebody already got Shaw, right? All right. Can somebody send out a list of all of it? Yes. Yes, we will. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take Scansy and Jerisich. Okay. You want to do Civic Lawn then? Yep. Oh, Finholm. And Nicole, when you're doing BMX and Crescent, can you do the sand volleyball as well since they're all together? 
Yes. And sorry, I, I'm having a real choppy connection here. So I, <laughs> frustrating. I can't totally hear everything. And I don't know if you guys, can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. fine. Okay. So I have Cres Crescent BMX and the volleyball courts. Yes. And I can take others if needed, but um, I yeah. I think that's it. Um, I think the only one I didn't see was, sh sh nope, Shaw was there. You want to scroll through that real quick there, Louise? I think we're yeah, good. So I missed uh, what, Ro which one's Roger's doing. It's Roger's going to do Scanty and Jerisich. I'm going to do the Civic Lawn and the Bogue viewing platform. Did someone take Tallman? Nope. I don't think so. It's the, by my count, it's missing. So uh, I mean, I can do that one. I'm over in that area. Yeah. Okay. I have a list. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Terry will scroll through yeah. this, but um, yeah. Somebody would send that out. That would probably help. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure. Okay. So what's, what's our timeline for this? When are we? So I'm going to try to, let's say by the end of next week, I'll have updated this with the pros plan and shared the link and then we can start going. And so that's, um, today's the third. So let's say it's out by the 10th oh. to the 10, 11, 12, maybe could, is it reasonable to get it done by the end of March? Weather Wait. permitting? So then we're in time, of, yeah, in time for our next meeting, ideally. Yeah, then, we, then we can have sorted the spreadsheet, the resulting spreadsheet, and uh, have it ready for the next meeting. Yeah, weather isn't a, isn't a factor. I don't think we're going to get any snowfall anymore. <laughs> Winter's over. Just days like today. Yeah. Yeah, I just, as I walked in the door, the news was saying it was going to be 62 in Gig Harbor tomorrow. And that's, that's like summer, summer wow. weather here. Wow. Yeah, it and rain i think well and then it starts raining and if anybody has any issues getting to their park or they just get busy or whatever just shoot me a text and i'll be happy to run and do one or an extra one we'll figure something out just just let us know um and we'll get that squared up the weather channel sure isn't reporting 62 to here tomorrow no <laughs> hey, it, it it all on, on, uh, that's the como weather forecast i think all right well. oh well <laughs> there you go what you I was getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Louise, good job again. That that's awesome. You did amazing yeah, very work nice. again. Amazing work again. <laughs> Thank you. You're very kind. Yeah. Um, moving on to the creating and adopt a park program. Mm, I think Mary was this year. Well, and I will chime in here that I hunted all over for my, I know with perfect certainty that I have a Word document with all my links for every city that I looked at and I cannot for the love of God find it, which means it's not on my laptop, it's on a work computer. So <laughs> well, Terry had posted, Louise, if you could unshare so we can look at what was in the packet, because Terry had included the, I think it's from the Adoptive Road program kind of redid what's already approved in the city for the adopt a road program that we might be able to turn into search and replace adopt a road with adopt a park be a good start yeah like we pretty much already did a lot of it right We have a lot of program documents that don't necessarily need to be reviewed here. So this was kind of just a general program to look at and see what the thoughts were for how it would be handled. Earlier, could that potentially be either a public works contact or a parks commissioner contact, I guess? Um, it would be someone on staff. Okay. So does this, I mean, since this, this is a volunteer program, does it have to be funneled through the city staff or is it something that the Parks Commission, you know, handles or I, I don't know if there's some sort of issue there at all? I mean, I, I would think it'd be just kind of be an extension of the Parks Appreciation Day, right? I mean, there's no... 
Jeff, do you have input on that? Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I mean, just like the roads program, right? Yeah. 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 So, are we wanting to adopt out full parks or more like parks projects and signage? Uh, didn't this, was the signage removed from the budget? Wasn't there signage approved in the budget? There, there was not. I mean, I was, yeah, I was going to talk about that when we got onto the signage. But as far as adopt a park program, um, you mean you mean signage for the adopt a park program? Yes. Um, yes, I think that was included in the adopt a park program, wasn't it? Yeah, there was five thousand dollars for advertising and signage and yeah, startup costs, I guess. Yeah. And it was it was intended to be per park not necessarily a project or area, but it was intended to be per park. So if you had a large park, let's just say Crescent Creek Park, um, it, it's likely that that would be adopted by a large group or yeah, quite a few people. Um, whereas Soundview Forest might be a fewer number or even Shaw Park might be just a, a few handfuls of people. Fishman Trail might be able to be yeah. divided up. Right, that's true. Like yep. segmented or something yeah 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 i think if we can figure out how we want to segment them so we know how many groups we need then we can kind of like we did for parks appreciation day last year where we were recruiting companies to use it as an employee appreciation event and, and service clubs that kind of thing i think we go for those groups and we have this thing filled up pretty quickly because it's a really good community awareness program for them to do when you know there's a sign up that says that they're cleaning up the road and if the road's not clean you're going to call that company and say hey go pick up your litter i think the adoptive park can work the same way typically they sign an agreement saying that they will do a minimum of you know one clean up a quarter or something like yeah. that yeah. we have to um report all volunteer hours so there's a reporting factor there. You mean the companies would have to report or whoever, the organizations would have to report how many people went for how many hours? Correct. That's a L and I requirement for volunteers. Do you report us every month? It's put in there. We used to report it every month. Huh, interesting. You're volunteers. Yeah. So I didn't know do we, we have any supported. parks in mind that we want to start with this then? I mean, Wilkinson is one that jumps off my mind immediately, probably Adam Tallman. See, and I, I think what I'm thinking, again, back to Parks Appreciation Day, Heritage Distilling was all over, and so was Seven Seas, and they both wanted Sound Before Us or Scancy immediately. So I, I think we have to figure out what they are and almost do a press release or something coming from the city and saying, first come, first serve, because I think it's going to be popular. I really do. Yeah. So, so we're looking like press release, like we're looking for groups up to 25 from like five to 25. And then, you know, we kind of fill, then we get an idea of what parks need how many people and then we fill it up like that. Well, I think we have to, I think we have to allow the organization to choose the park they want. That's our adopted thing. road groups. Sometimes they're just a family and sometimes they're a business. Sometimes they're a scout troop. Mm -hmm. So really that's up to them. So if you let them choose which park, but then it's like, okay, like Crescent Creek is going to need, you know, 15 individuals, say, just say 10 or 15 individuals, but there's only five of them. So they obviously don't qualify for that one. Or would you have multiple groups in the same park? I don't see that. But that would be hard to coordinate, I think. How many yeah. volunteers each park needs. Well, that I think that that piece of the survey is still useful. So as we 
and let's leave the adopt a park line in the in the survey doc so that people can note the kind of tasks and what kind of scope might be needed for adopt a park so that we have that to talk about also next time. And we I think we definitely need input from operations on that too because they they might have some ideas or restrictions. Right. I know there's the, the union labor issues or something like that. We weren't allowed to do something within their job type or description. There's that, but there's also um, more importantly, there's safety issues, indemnification, liability. Okay. Make sure we don't want people up on roofs cleaning. We don't want people with- With chainsaws in the forest. Chainsaws, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that's happened before. Yeah. <laughs> able to tell us how many people they would estimate for each of the parks so that in this press release, whatever we're calling it, we say we list the parks and say a group of X size or, you know, approximately X size and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that they could provide some guidance in that. Well, and the, the press release probably says, Hey, we're starting an adopt a parks program and go to this web page, you know, at the city to learn more about it. And then it breaks down more of which parks need what sort of commitments to help organizations choose the park that they want to adopt. I, I'm I, think, I think there's a middle point there. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, there, there can, the, the press release can be more voluminous, but I don't think it can hold every park's requirements either. Right, no, I don't think so either. Right. Okay, so when we do the inventory then, we're just kind of gathering an idea of how many volunteers for each specific park. And then we're gonna to talk to the public works and operations and see, I mean, I, I don't know, do we need to ha have that, have one of the superintendents? We need to have Ken, Ken come in or something like that? Yeah, Ken or even Jim Statton, he's the field supervisor for parks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, if, or if one of us just want to have a conversation with him one day, or maybe that may be better or easier. Well, and let's um, make, let's make good notes in the survey doc, you know, that, that uh, paths need weeding and that things need sweeping or that the something needs painting, you know, I, I don't know, different things for different parks, right? Um, you know, let, let's make good notes of if, if you were the one that was in charge of that park, what would you want to see done? And but I guess I think we also need to think long term. I think we need, as part of the adopt a park, it's like every three months you're responsible for picking up litter. Um, I'm going to the list. You're responsible for picking up litter, resurfacing the trails and plants, weeding the planter areas, maintaining the trails, and removing invasive species and maybe once a year repainting a railing. I mean, I'm making that up, but yeah, sure. I think we're looking for people to do an ongoing set of activities. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think make great notes when we do that and we kind of get an idea of maybe like, you know, immediate weeding projects that might need done. And then we can just, you know, have an inventory and then we can focus them in those certain areas to start with. Yeah. Um, Cause there's, so, a lot, there's a lot more branch pickup in Grandview Park right now than there will be in August, right? It's right, just exactly. Right. Here. So that you're right, Mary, there are seasonal, uh, seasonal considerations, you know, as we go along. Okay. Okay. I, I, this looks like it's looking pretty, pretty great. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll do the inventory and then we'll kind of pick up with this next month. I think it's still probably got another month rolling around before we're getting close on it, don't, wouldn't you say? I think we still have a little more hashing out to do once we get through the inventory and stuff like that. And we'll talk to the public yeah. works and the operations. Um, so if we could add that to the old business for next month, we can finish up with that one. Um, any other questions or comments on that one specifically? Answer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I know I'm just kind of here to make notes, but I have a, um, 
our key club has the uh, road down below Peninsula High School as our adopter road. Um, and so when we go out and clean that, uh, the, the county provides us with signs that say, you know, uh, people working and they give us vests and they give us the, the tongs and um, plastic bags. So my question, I guess, would be, is the city going to be responsible for, for providing materials, um, you know, tools and things of that nature for, for this program or, or what's it look like? It is what it is in, uh, uh, it's actually stated in the draft agreement, City of Gig Harbor will provide trash bags and hand tools as needed. I was going to ask Jeff that, whether the city is going to do that, has extra hand tools they're willing to give out and have somebody there to collect them? Yeah, we could. Well, I think that's a good conversation to have with operations, but we could have a checkout program. I mean, that's what we do right now with the okay. Adopter Road. We have a checkout program for all that that Spencer just listed. Um, granted, hopefully safety is not the same issue in the uh, park as it is alongside a roadway, but there's similar items, you know, shovels, rakes, wheelbarrows, garbage bags, you know, and then coordination of that so that they can get picked up afterwards. Yep. Uh, any other questions? Hmm? All right. Go ahead and move on to the, uh, the Cushman Trail etiquette signage. So this is one that um, Roger and I have been working on a little bit um, behind the scenes. And um, we just identified some problematic areas and essentially Roger identified a real big problem with the entire Cushman if he wants to relay that message. He had a, um, a, pretty, a pretty innovative idea on how to, go ahead, Roger. <laughs> oh. Um... Well, first of all, I didn't realize that money was, there's, there's no money to budget for us to do signage. Is that correct? Because last, the last hold meeting. Jeff, hold on, hold on. I didn't realize Jeff. <laughs> yeah, we're oh. going to ask Jeff about money. Hey, Dad. Yeah, we, we no, no longer have uh, funding for the Cushman Trail etiquette signs did not make its way through the full budget process. How much was in the budget? Just, I'm Thank just. I think it was $8,000. OK. OK. So is this even something we can keep moving forward with then, if it's not even budgeted? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I understand, you know, there was what's in the package was this notification of the um, pedestrian bicycle estate for the $1.5 million. I, I sat in on the. Pretty darn large Zoom meeting. I was there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you were there too. It's. I think it's going to be a tough lift because there's a lot of waiting in there for things. I'm not sure whether the city of Gig Harbor can offer. Um, it's we would barely fit in under that third public education and awareness programs designed to inform drivers. It's really more for education of drivers interacting with cyclists or what they're calling rollers now. It's a fairly new term for me, but any anybody that's on a wheeled vehicle, whether it's a bicycle or a scooter or or whatever is considered a roller, um, they are not. A, they don't look really favorably on uh, what they call permanent items what do they call that permanent structures are not authorized i did ask specifically whether signage was they said well yeah maybe and there's some other things in there that i think might be tough there's there's a 10 or 50 there's a point system that you have to meet and every application gets rated and gets a number of points and so there's stuff in there like, does your city have free lunch programs for school kids? And that's like 10 or 15 points. Um, and there's a lot of, um, there's some points available in there for whether this program that you're trying to get money for would be available specifically to meet the needs of disadvantaged people. And, you know, Geek Harbor, it might be tough getting those points. Let's let's just say that. Um, so I, I'm not sure whether and 
it's you know and there's could a it could be i agree but um with the the training of law enforcement officials on state laws ap applicable to the walkers and the rollers i know we do have an education issue on the cushman trail and i know we did just yeah. hire a few new officers so maybe and i believe they said that officer hours could be contributed as the matching part of the gr uh grant so i don't know if these new officers already have you know, their objective going forward, but I would like to see some of them on the Cushman Trail. <laughs> yeah, some of the some of the officers on cycles. I mean, I uh, I know Chief Bussey has some police cycles, bicycles that they occasionally could be on it. I mean, that, that would fit better. I think that's what you were trying to get at earlier, Ben, is that instead of just doing signs, we, we might have a better chance of getting enforcement mobilizations, but that's something we'd have to talk to the chief about whether he's even got people, even if we got $50,000, whether that would make enough difference um, or not. It, it, so there was talk about speed limits on sidewalks at some point. So, I mean, is that going to be a cycle officer enforcing that or is that just a, you know? I don't know. I would be up to Chief, chief Pussy to figure yeah. out how that gets implemented. Jeff or Terry, have you heard anything about the speed limits on sidewalks in the Harborview area or anything like that? Well, I've heard that there are restrictions from uh, electronic uh, mobility devices that that uh, actually passed council yeah, uh, recently. That. So, but I don't know about speed limits. I think it put a speed limit on on some of those was an option. I don't I don't know how the final version went down. Gotcha. Um, as far as funding, though, I have to be I want to be very clear. So uh, there's a lot of work that still needs to go forward to try and put together a design for and a concept. And, and once that work is completed by the Parks Commission, I think that, that timing wise, it would work well to have that introduced into the 2022 budget because we start our 2022 budget process in June. So we're almost there to develop the uh, layout concept. I mean, we can get ter Terry and staff can help get quotes for what signs might be like so we can help establish what budget uh, to, to request. But so I think in the timing, it works out really well, even if it's not identified for purchase in the budget. Okay, okay then given that, I mean, it sounds like what we're gonna do is try to see what we can come up with and then maybe get something back to Jeff to say, okay, how much would signs like this cost if we were to put up 10 of them? Right, so, location, uh, size, right. yeah. Um, yep. There, I I did okay. find one sign. I I think I texted it to you, Ben. Uh, if I can share my screen, I'll show you what an option is. That, can I can I share my screen? Yeah, just the bottom. Yeah, of the share screen. Is this my phone cable preview desktop one? All right, let's go. Allow Zoom opening system preferences. Okay, I'm trying here. Microsoft Teams. Ah, huh, I've never. No, down at the bottom when you click there, the green share screen. Yeah, it comes up with a. Then message. when you click on it, you have to click on this on this desktop view that you want, and then click share. That's the oh, part I always a, forget. Yeah, all I've got is a triangle. Oh, it's probably because I'm using a. Uh, it's probably because I'm using a, a not a. a camera that's not built in. Everything's got the little triangle with the exclamation. Oh, that's bad. And I don't want it. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, well. Roger was on text. I can pull it up real quick. Yeah. Uh, never mind, I can't. I'm not on the right one. I don't have it. I lied. All right. Sorry about that. But why don't you give us the gist of what it was? Uh, it was just a pretty simple blue sign and it it's um, just says stay on track. So it's got like three vertical lines, like our divided pathway. The left portion of it has two, two footprints. And the right portion has your typical bicycle symbol saying that bikes on the right, pedestrians on the left. And if, so that same sign could be just reverse going in the opposite direction, asking the pedestrians to always be on the left and cyclists on the, on the right. There we go. There you go, Ben. Good uh, job. Yeah. Hold it still. <laughs> there you go. Got it. Yeah, so it's just that one. Just trying to create some separation on the trail, I think. Yeah. And so people don't so people understand how to 
how to walk on the trail and how to cycle on the trail. I think cyclists know to stay on the right, but pedestrians use the entire trail, which it is a shared pathway. So I think something like that sign would be relatively simple. I don't think it would be hugely costly. It's just numbers of signs. Right, right. And, and then, um, like I said, last night we reached out to Penmet Parks and there is a meeting tomorrow evening regarding their new recreation center. Um, I think it's at five or six o'clock. I know there's a few people interested in it. And um, I hope we'll attend that and kind of, we're hoping to pull them into the conversation, the signage um, for the Cushman Trail because that's gonna be the new trailhead coming from Tacoma, um, pretty much where that location is. So we're trying to pull them into the conversation to have a, a cohesive um, signage throughout the Cushman Trail. Um, and, then, and then we also, there was also a couple of other spots that we identified could be cautionary, like slow or, you know, no passing kind of through the Rosedale Hills there, yeah. just because it's very narrow, it's an elevated surface, there's nowhere to abandon your bike if you're going. Or on that, that bridge that goes from uh, Burnham downwards. The only exit is over the railing. I think you're on mute, Ben. You're on mute, Ben. You're on mute. Sorry about that, I just lost everything. Um, so yeah, we identified some cautionary areas where some cautionary signage might be useful. Um, you know, slow or don't pass or something that affect near the Rosedale, kind of those steeps. And then also, um, I had a, a very good friend uh, hitting the crosswalk by a car at the top of Hollycroft there behind Bartell Drugs. I, I, I know that area is an issue because people are coming off the freeway, they're going fast, you know. I, I would I, I would like to do something about that. I don't know what we can do, like rapid flashing beacons or something that effect, but I know that's a problematic sidewalk that needs to be addressed. So I don't know if this is the right opportunity to do that, but um, yeah, that, that one's definitely a, a hazard I would, I would identify. Yeah, that's um, almost a public works issue now that we're getting in the streets and flashing. So yeah, yeah. I, so I don't think this is the right opportunity to do that, but I, I, I right. know it's an issue. I think that's why we need a pedestrian bicycle committee, whatever. I think that it had been talked about, but got axed earlier on last year or later on last year. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so it sounds like with this topic, we are going to be still moving forward. We'll still be having a discussion on this, but it sounds like we're gonna probably approach the June uh, budgetary cycle um, so yeah, we can still move forward with this and have discussions on this, but um, it doesn't look like it's going to be budgeted for this year. Um, okay. And then any other questions on the Cushman? Did anybody have any input if they have any other concerns on that? I don't know. This might be an opportunity. I can talk about the Leafline Trails Coalition. Let's uh, let's hold off. Let's do let's just let Jeff do his update and then we'll do the committee okay. reports. All righty. Yeah. I have just one comment on Cushman Trail. Is I think the more you guys and we um, gather that information together about what's the right thing to do and what the signage might look like and other things of that nature and can provide that information, then the budget is much is a much more accurate effort. Uh, when they go to start that process in October, and it does take time to figure all of this out. So I, I think we're doing, maybe doing everybody a favor by everybody meaning Jeff, um, that when he tries to go do his budget, that there's yeah. actual recommendations behind those numbers. And, and to be clear, I mean, yeah, council sees the budget first uh, in October, but uh, staff starts developing it in June and uh, if, if it's not in there by June, then council has to add it when they see it in October, which is not, not necessarily harder to do, but takes a lot more effort. 
uh, in communication. Well, and I know that's something that we wanted to get done this year after last year. We yeah. realized we got in way too late, so. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, Jeff, you want to go ahead and do your sure. parks update report? Sure. Uh, Terry supplied the Parks Commission uh, park update. Um, I, I was going to go through and just highlight a couple things here, uh, but happy to talk about any of them if you have questions. Um, let's see here. Um, Austin Estuary Honoring Project. So just so you know, the city has made the application for a shoreline master program amendment and also the uh, um, comp plan amendment that is required for the shoreline master program amendment to be adopted. Um, it's going to take a while. I know I need to update a bullet that says anticipated installation date has been extended to the end of 2021. It's likely not going to be at least until March of 2022 or later before that's installed because of the process that needs to take place. So um, it's disappointing, but we are working with the uh, artists to make sure that the art continues to be stored appropriately. Uh, Ken and Terry have been providing me with some information. I need to uh, probably have Ken reach out to the artist and start, or Terry reach out to the artist, someone, and, and start coordinating that with the artist. So, um, so more to come on that, not any good news necessarily there. Then, um, Veterans Memorial Park Playground. If you haven't been out there, that playground is open. We had a soft opening a week and a half ago and uh, ribbon cutting last Tuesday. So um, everything I've heard reports from staff and others that it's been a very enjoyed uh, playground equipment. A lot of people out there uh, taking advantage of it. So um, uh, kudos to the crew for uh, installing those sidewalks that make it so much nicer to get from the parking lot and the sidewalk to the playground and through the park, uh, but also to the engineering group for coordinating all of this and getting it uh, constructed despite a bunch of hiccups that come along the way with many construction projects. And that's all I had for updates, but uh, anything else, if you'd like to hear more about or have questions, let me know. The uh, the ribbon cutting was sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mayor, if you didn't see it, the mayor uh, handed the scissors to one little guy who was there and he, he cut it. He was pretty happy to cut that ribbon. Those are Seahawks colors on those playground equipment, right? Mm -hmm. They are. I don't know if that was a coincidence they, or not. I don't think it was happen? a coincidence. No, no, they voted. That was part of their vote. But yeah. Yeah. They Very chose Seahawks. Yep, they okay. chose the toy and they, they had uh they went back and got had the options on the color scheme and chose that in a separate. Cool. All righty, well excellent. Okay. Um if there's oh Ben, you had your hand up. Um what's the little circle really deal at the top of it? You see it? Not like the not like the tower, but next to it, there's a little circle thing, saucer looking thing. Uh, I think that's just a shade. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think there's a, a circle swing. There's a circle, I see a circle swing around the side, but like, is it, is it, it, it's kind of up to the side. At an angle? Yeah. It's fixed. Yeah, yeah. I think that fixed awesome. circle is just for shade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Shade. Interesting. Interesting. And I did have I was one more question. It was too. <laughs> on the Wilkinson Farm Park for the benches? Yes. Um, is, is one of those benches perchance going back by the pond? I'm not sure. Uh, one, one is proposed um, back by the pond and then one of them is proposed in that field that's up closer to the trail on the other side of the pond, way up high. That one has not been finalized yet. Um, we're still working with the donor. I just want to make sure one gets by the pond because I'm like, I didn't even know about the pond like a year ago. <laughs> well, I had I had just two other things that were in addition to the parks uh, updates. Uh, one of them actually is Wilkinson Park Pond. Funny, it's being mentioned here, but uh, we had a request. Uh, the city did from. 
a, a gentleman that said if there's any restrictions on if he can take his boat and row his boat around the pond at Wilkinson Farm Park. And uh, I, I don't think we have any restrictions on that, um, but I, the, the only restriction that I could see is that we, we, you, we don't want anyone to trample down the vegetation around the pond to access the pond. I know there's probably at least four or five years ago when I last walked around there, there were a couple places where people could walk to the edge of the pond, but I don't know if those are still there. But something to, something to think about, and I don't know if uh, Parks Mission would ever want to provide an input on that, but about whether or not the, they would want a rule for that pond to say whether boats should be on it or not. So. Natural pond? What's that? Is it a natural pond? Uh, it, it is. Um, it was bigger many years ago, but it is a natural pond. There's a lot of water that comes off the wet uh, that hillside, um, and it has been there for as long as the city's owned it, at least. Gotcha. I don't think I want to provide any comment on that right now. Okay. Yeah, I think we'd need a little bit more information on that. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not looking for the Parks Mission to set out a, a rule now or, or make a recommendation now. I'm just giving you an update that someone had inquired on it. So if you see somebody rowing, my, that's been my only caveat is you're not allowed to uh, trample vegetation to, to get your boat on the pond. But um, if it starts becoming popular or an issue because people start causing uh, degradation of the shoreline, then we need to talk about how we address that. Yeah. There. I'm sorry, Louise, I didn't hear all There's that. There's not a lot of room to row there. There's not a lot of room to row. No. No. He has a uh, little like There's a lot of retention ponds you can kayak in, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> uh, the other I might want to just give a quick update on is the uh, parks manager. Uh, uh, we are uh, beginning the interview for parks manager um, and so I'm not sure how long this process is going to take but uh, when we get closer to having a finalist or proceeding with something I will let everyone know. Any other questions for Jeff there or Terry? All right um, let's jump into the uh, committee reports. Roger you want to share what you got on the leaf line trails? Collision? Yeah, I, um, I attended their um, 25 February meeting, uh, try to get a little bit of an understanding of what, if anything, the city of Gig Harbor could do, uh, whether it would cost any money. Um, it's still not clear, although I, I do was kind of focusing in on one area that I think they're going to need help in from a lot of cities and counties, and that's going to be mapping. They have a, a map visioning thing where they want to get every trail on a centralized unified map. And so that you could look at Kitsap County, you could look at Pierce County, King County, and see where all these trails are. And as of yet, they don't have that. Um, I'm actually going to be attending another, their map visioning meeting, which is, I think, the end of March. Um, find out about that. But my suspicion is that what they might what might be helpful for them from the city of gig harbor would be gis support like providing a map to them like a shape map or shape files for the cushman trail and or any any trails that we have that would be on it i jeff you'd have to let me know what if anything yeah. that your gis folks have but i would imagine if, we have a lot. Yeah, that's and I I understand that we can't we don't want to spend any money, but I, I think last time you said that was okay to have them help, not engineering folks, but GIS. Yeah, I think that that's that would be fine to have our GIS coordinator uh, provide that information. Uh, okay. Probably connect through Terry. Yeah, Terry when, coordinate that. But, yeah. After I go to the vision meeting, the map visioning meeting, then I can at least offer that we could probably give them that, which would be useful for them because they, clearly they're going to be using a, a GIS system, which is going to require the shape files. And if yeah. we can do that, and I'm, I'm also seeing if that providing those files wouldn't get us on their list of, you know, cities that support the leaf line trails coalition. So 
There are some city small ones I've heard have actually uh, granted them some money, but I know that's out of the question for right now. So I'm attempting to find out what we can provide them to assist. Uh, the, the intent is just to get a, a large network of trails set up on a mapping. And they had some people from the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area that are doing very similar things. Uh, pretty amazing the mapping that they have. And I, I think I just saw some of the stuff we had that even showed slope, which I think that's just great for people. <laughs> okay. So, and then you said their next meeting is the end of March? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's the 25th of March is when their um, map visioning meeting is. Okay. And then I can find out where they are. I'm not exactly sure whether they, uh, how far they are, but I'll, I'll get that information. That's a whole different group of people. Well, actually, it's on the 31st of March. I'm sorry. Okay. I have one comment going back to the Wilkinson Pond. Um, I found a note that I had after that phone call that it's a permanently ponded wetland. Um, from a historical review of the property, it appears to be man-made, resulting from the owners damming up a natural spring in the 20th century. So I don't know if that changes anything. <laughs> That's from the historic report that we have on the property. So. <laughs> so yes, man made, but who knows how old. Um, all right, and then uh, any other committee reports? Mary, Louise, Ben? No, okay. So. As you all know, there's some terms ending this month and some of you are back on the cycle from renewal and hopefully you reapply. There's one person who's been with us a certain amount of time. I think she's just finishing her third term and um, Sarah's last meeting is this evening. And I just wanna take a second and say, Sarah, thank you so much for all you've ever done for the Parks Commission. You were the Parks Commission chair when I showed up and you were just, you're, you've always been such a beacon of light and positivity, and we just so appreciate you being a part of this. And I, I know you had mentioned you might want to share your experience with us. Yes, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen. I have a short, very, very short little thing. Is that a prepared statement? I like it. <laughs> Can you see it? Yes. Yep. All right, so <laughs> this is me at my first Parks Commission meeting. <laughs> and it looks like I'm nobody's paying attention to me and I'm scared to death and <laughs> I've come a long way. Um, but it was, it's, it's been a very, an amazing experience. I've learned a lot. Um, and some of the highlights have been Parks Appreciation Day um, in the past. I've been very involved with that organization, the organization of that, and have participated every year. It's my friend Amy that I walk with and I gave her the hat and her hat is almost white. She wears it all the time. <laughs> so that was a highlight. Um, I've been involved with some really big projects and Sitch was just getting going when I first started and I feel very happy about that when I walk by and I've been involved in some little projects. This is one of my favorite. I, I, I don't know if I had influence, but I tried to get the hedge taken away from the information center. So it had better <laughs> exposure and it's beautiful now. And so I just wanted to show you my list of takeaways from Parks Commission. Um, it's been a privilege to work with amazing Parks Commission people, including yourselves through the years. The volunteers at Parks Appreciation Day and other events are so impressive. I love the, um, um, how, how people love this community and are willing to participate. And the city staff has just been so amazing, especially Jeff and Terry. I really appreciate all the support and kindness that you've given me through the years and, all, and, and the maintenance guys and everybody. It's just been a really great experience for me. And the city staff is just, they're amazing. So 
Being on the Parks Commission has been a privilege. Um, serving and representing the community is an honor. And going forward, you guys have some big things on your plate. Crescent Creek visioning hopefully will happen someday. Pros plan update. Um, there's the recycling program keeps coming up and it's would be really good to do. And I would like to stay involved with these things and more. So you know what I can do? You know what I'm interested in? Keep me in mind. Just thank you. Big thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you so much. Do you have anything in mind for next? What's next? <laughs> Um, I have my fingers in a few things, and I'm also involved in lots of other things. So yes, um, you are. <laughs> so it's not like I'm not going to be busy. I'm also hoping that COVID happens, gets over itself here pretty soon, and I can go back to traveling and um, being with my family. And I don't know. I am involved in several other organizations, so I have plenty to do. Good. And Sarah? Yeah. Thank you for, for being on here. How do you spell your last name? M C D A N I E L. So how long did you serve for? How many years was it? It's been seven. So I started um, in the middle of a term. Rana Lorovich, Lorovich um, went to city council, and I took her place. So I've done. I've. It's two and a half terms, basically. Nicole's passing me by pretty fast in the time. <laughs> Now the longest serving, longest tenured parks commissioner? I don't know. Are, are we, yeah. Nicole, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so, it doesn't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm still waiting it, for it, Crescent it, Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, all your wisdom and all your great advice are gonna be well missed. And Thank you. we're so happy to hopefully have you go on to other things and, and hopefully you know involved <laughs> with this down the road, so. You'll see my name out there, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, Miss I hope Sarah. you enjoy your flowers. They're so beautiful, you guys. This is the nicest thing ever. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Sarah. I, I, I know we'll see each other on the road and out, out in the field, out in the parks, but uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and I look forward to crossing paths again. Thank you. <laughs> same, I feel yeah. the same. I've enjoyed having you on the commission, Sarah. <laughs> this is my the start of the end of my 15th year with the commission. <laughs> so how many um, terms is that? No. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, it started out as uh, Friends of the Parks. Right. Uh, wasn't ah. even a commission. Yeah, it was Friends of the Parks. So yeah, I've enjoyed having you on there and you bringing a lightness to it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really have you've always kept it make sure it was always lighthearted and i really appreciate that because some of the topics can get remember the the nativity scene <laughs> i didn't put yeah i didn't put that in my um thing <laughs> no, the news showed up for that one we do have a, a attendee on the phone i don't know if you're ready to see if there's any yep. public comment let's go ahead and entertain um public comment if the attendee on the line would like to go ahead and provide public comment, we'd be more than happy to have you share with us at this time. Okay, caller, you can go ahead and talk if you can take yourself off mute. You might need to do star six. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Can you? Uh, you are quite the one. You are, um, I won't give you my specific address, but my name is Thomas Wick and I live in Gig Harbor. Is it code 98335? So um, thank you very much. And I wanted to say you guys are quite the lively group and I've been listening. Um, anyway, on Mr. Langhelm's, um, on his um, agenda for this evening, resolution 1200 was identified as something um, that I access via your published agenda. And I have some concerns and some questions that I'd like to bring to the Parks Commission's attention. Um, one of those is I noticed I'm, I'm reading the actual um, resolution and they talk about, I'm gonna read it specifically so there's no um, confusion. It says a housing development would almost certainly mean the further degradation of this uniquely healthy salmon habitat, the loss of a great number of trees and dramatic change in the look of this corner of our downtown um, view and basin. One of the 
I have two concerns. One, um, this statement would imply that state and federal protections for the salmon stream and the salmon don't apply within Gig Harbor city limits. Because obviously, I think we all would agree that the city of Gig Harbor cannot afford to buy every parcel of land that has um, salmon habitat and salmon streams to protect it. So I think we, I think we could all agree on that. So that was the first concern. And then I looked through the document a little bit further. And when I get down to the end, um, it's, what's confusing is they say that the, it's going to be held in perpetuity, which means it can never be, um, I'm going to read it verbatim. It says, the mayor is authorized to sign an affidavit on behalf of the city as the receiving agency, acknowledging the city will accept the property interest acquired and protect and steward the conservative conservation features of the parcel in perpetuity, which means forever. But then I go down just a little bit further in the last statement, section three, it says if the grant is awarded and the state of the parcel is executed, the city hereby accepts parcel 022-106-1108 into the park's inventory. And then this is the part that leaves me confused profoundly. Any development of the property will be authorized and budgeted by future council action. Well, if it's being purchased to preserve it in perpetuity, which means you can never develop it, it cannot be disturbed, destroyed, altered, and the fish enjoy those protections for eternity, then the section three statement would be problematic. And that's the concern I have. And again, um, the city is buying this specific property in conjunction with Pierce County to enter into the park system, which I, I applaud everybody for doing so. Um, I, I'm a real proponent of environmental stewardship but the concern I have is, like I said, there are numerous properties both in and outside the urban growth boundary and inside city, Gig Harbor city limits that I'm sure also have the same um, salmon streams and require the same protections for those fish. But the city, like I said earlier, there is no way they can afford to purchase every property to protect the fish and the environment and the streams. So that is something I would ask that the um, Parks Commission maybe talk about and ask the question, why this specific property and does it set a precedent for the purchase of future properties? And then why don't state and federal protections protect those properties um, regardless of any um, intent to develop them? So that's the question. And again, I was listening to you guys and you sound like a really lively, fun um, group of people. And I thank you for your um, efforts because I do enjoy the parks here in and around Gig Harbor. And I thank you for allowing me to provide public comment this evening. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I believe that the, now Jeff, definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but I just want to touch on his the development of the property as because it needs to have public access in it. Is that what that's referring to? That's, that's what it's referring to. And, and, and less, I would suggest if there are issues that the parks commission wants to take up best based on Mr. Wick's uh, comments um, that we address them at the next parks commission meeting on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that one I jumped off page immediately, but yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Um, yep. No, you're, but you're absolutely right. That is, that is true. It, it's public access is required uh, for the uh, for the grant award, so that's how, what it's referring to: the development for public access. Okay. So yes, Mr. Wick, we certainly appreciate your comments. Um, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, we will have a we hope to have a discussion on this in the future uh, regarding the comments you provided. I do believe this resolution, Jeff. You said this resolution was already passed by council. Correct. This was uh, already passed by council, and this was just informational today for the Parks Commission. But the property itself has, the application hasn't even been submitted yet, though, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Ben, cut out a little bit for oh, me. Oh, sorry. The, the, the application was not submitted yet, though, correct? Correct. It, it's not going to be submitted until March 14th or 15th. I forget which. Okay, so we don't really have an opportunity to talk about this as a commission before our next meeting, then, do we? No. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Wick, thank you for your comments. I I encourage you to definitely reach out to the city council at their next meeting when this is on their agenda. Um, I, I don't believe the Parks Commission is going to have an opportunity to you know, provide comment before our next meeting and their next meeting. I don't think it's going to coincide with each other. So thank you for your time spent listening to our meeting, but I really encourage you to speak to the uh, council directly. Um, I think it's going to be the most effective route moving forward for yourself and your comments. Um, and on that note, any other public comment? All right. And I think that's it, right? Yeah. Can I make the uh, motion to adjourn? Perfect. I second, second it. All right. Ben seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Keep everybody. Yep. Thank, you, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good month. Bye. Bye.